Hey everybody, have you ever wished that there was a better way of gathering requirements from your client and being able to break down their complicated systems and to have a whole lot of fun at the same time? Well, there is, it's called event storming. So check this out. Hi everybody, I'm William from SSW and today I'm going to be talking to you about event storming. Now event storming for me is a really fun modeling technique. It's a great alternative to doing UML, which is very precise, it takes a long time. It's based on DDD, you know, everyone loves domain driven design and it's all based on game storming, so we bring that little fun element to the whole process. Now ultimately, it helps us to break down very complex uh, business domains. This is what we might end up with. A whole lot of sticky notes, all very colorful. You know, it looks a little bit like chaos, but it actually makes sense. It's all arranged on a board in a really sensible way. The alternative is to do it with a, a digital tool or an online tool like Miro. There's some great alternatives as well. This becomes really nice and easy because the stickies also don't fall off the wall. And uh, I do prefer the online version. The benefits of event storming, it definitely helps us align all the stakeholders, experts, and the developers. It helps us build that, that ubiquitous language so everyone can understand each other we're talking in the same terms and you know, the understanding of the whole system, everyone has that. You don't, nothing's left unclear or fuzzy at the end. And the event storming can help us sort of highlight the, uh, the, the weaknesses of a process as well. Where are the hotspots and where are the issues where not everyone has a great understanding and where do things sort of just break down and become difficult? As a great uh, uh, end deliverable, we have that visualized end to end flow. And so you can actually see where the process starts, where it ends, and everything in between. Now, after a event storming workshop, uh, we can use that to accelerate our development team. You know, our MVP, our minimum viable product, is very well defined. All the events, the process, the whole, everything that we need is fairly well described, and we can translate all that into uh, backlog items. So we can definitely start working on this project very quickly. And event storming fits into any of the agile methodologies. You don't have to do event storming at the start of a project. That can be done in the middle or at the end. It's all about gaining that great understanding of the process that you're, you're trying to replicate. The main events, one of the really high key uh, concepts is um, the facts of what have happened in the business process. You know, it's, it's rooted in the past tense. You know, everything we talk about is invoice created, timesheet submitted, order created. Uh, it's a fact that can't be changed. It's something that did happen. Commands are usually the result of a user or even another system performing some sort of decision and uh, executing a command and then that ends up triggering a domain event. And they don't always have one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, some commands can actually trigger more than one event. The next thing is that we have aggregates. And this is the, the grouping of a bunch of commands and events and policies. We ha have this aggregate that describes all the, the relationships between the entities inside of, of this grouping. Now, event storming can be done at different levels. We can start at the big picture, 30,000 foot view. And all we're in interested in is identifying the events on a timeline, and the systems and the people who are involved, as well as the hotspots, they're very important. The next level down, you know, 10,000 foot view, would be the process modeling stage. And this is where we actually start collecting the policies or the, the, the reactive logic, the rules of the system. You know, we identify the commands and, and the, re the information that is required to execute those commands. And then down sort of closer to the ground level, we have the software design level. And this is where we start taking all of our commands and events grouping them together into our aggregates and uh, you start getting closer towards being able to um, build a, a real piece of software. So as an example, I have an event called timesheet created and that was triggered off by the command called create timesheet. And this was done by a developer. Now this developer needed to know the client that they worked for, the project that they worked on, the billing rate, the date and some notes, all very important pieces of information to create this timesheet. So we can group these together into the timesheets aggregate. And we also identified, hey, we need to talk to the CRM to just double check the, um, the billing rate, because maybe a discount applies. The developer may not have been aware of that. So we'll check that and apply that to the timesheet creation. And you know, we have a, a complementing command, uh, update timesheet, and that can actually trigger the same event, timesheet submitted. So if the developer comes back and they need to submit some extra notes or the date, whatever they needed to change, that can trigger off the same event as well. Now we can actually attach a policy to this event so that once this event has occurred, we can go, oh, okay. Uh, when a timesheet was submitted, we also want to then automatically go and create an invoice. And then the process continues, we identify the create invoice command, raise invoice created 
um, domain event, and we have the um, the policy there for as well that says, hey, when an invoice was updated or invoice was created, then we can actually sync these invoices with the external system uh, zero, our accounting package. And we can take this then and turn that, all these sticky notes can translate into backlog items. It's quite convenient, it's quite nice. Now, in summary, event storming is a lot of fun. It's very easy for us to adopt and use in our teams uh, or when working with the clients. It definitely allows us to all learn together, sort of like do that mass learning experience and understand these little complex domains that we're working with. Everyone gets aligned. We, we you know, from the stakeholders, the experts, the, the developers, we all end up being able to talk that same language. And event solving, like I said, is agile friendly, fits into any stage of the software development lifecycle. And yeah, it's great. Now, if you want to know a bit more, uh, we have our SSW rules website. You can go to our rules site and search for event storming. You'll find a whole lot more information about even how to prepare and facilitate an event storming workshop. Thank you very much. This is William from SSW TV signing off. <laughs>